Today, my friends, it's the king himself with the Buddy Presley band. Hello, Dave. Yeah, hi. Come on. How you doing? Let's do it for the Buddy Presley band. Thank you very band. much. Thank We've you. got Thank Dave you. B, who was Elvis. We've Calm got yourself. Corrado uh, Diani. Thank you very much, sir, uh, who was on guitar. And we've got Neil Hobday, who's on the doghouse bass. Come on. Yay. Um, Guys, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, now, Dave, would it be weird to refer to you as Elvis, or would you just prefer Dave? Dave is probably my real name. Dave, so. is, is, is that's the name that you were given, I assume? Yeah, you, were, it was, uh, yeah. you know, and Elvis is born. the name that you've adopted yeah. in your musical uh, pseudo name, career. Yeah. Uh, so I suppose the question uh, to ask you, it, uh, like, were you always a fan of Elvis, or is it the case that you discovered at some point in your life, hang on a minute, I can do a really <laughs> good impression of Elvis? I discovered Elvis when I was about nine. I won't tell you how many years ago that was. <laughs> and, um, and then sadly he died. And then everywhere on TV, radio, it was Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. And you couldn't help escape it. And it was in my blood. So how? Uh, so obviously we will be able to probably work out your age from this. How old were you when Elvis died? Twelve. Now that was, now was it 76? 77. 77, August the... 16th. 16th, yeah, August 16th. Were you testing me? No, no, I'm not. I'm, I, 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 actually, I'm sorry, it is a quiz. There's no prizes though. It's a very low budget show. Um, but no, it's not a quiz. But I am a, I am a, a big Elvis fan uh, myself. Cool. Um, so you were 12 at the age of Elvis's death. And by that time... For the last three years, you were loving Elvis, you yep. were singing Elvis. Yep. So what impact, as a 12-year-old kid, did his death have on you? Well, I was on holiday in Devon when he when he died. Whereabouts? Uh, Croyd Bay. Oh, I love it. I know it very well. Yeah. I've surfed there. Did you ever, really? Yes, I have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, my mum came out and told me, and I remember wailing like a baby. So, oh, um, my. And then, like I say, from then on, it was just every radio station, every TV station, it was films, it was just... Hel pelted at you non-stop and at that time what was your ambition Dave at the age of 12 were you already thinking one day I want to sing like Elvis or one day no, I want to play no. Las Vegas or well I used to I used to love watching the films and pretending yeah you do you don't you when you're a kid cowboys and Indians rock and roll yeah yeah so uh, and the films came on I wanted sports cars like he had I wanted the women like he had and Margaret I've come good a few of them so. have you <laughs> and Margaret you've shagged down Margaret oh in my the, god in my <laughs> Dave B from Buddy Presley has shagged down Margaret yeah, this is an unbelievable don't tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have a Did you have a favourite uh, film at the time? What was your favourite as a twelve year old boy? Oh, King Crow was the best film he made. Now, who, who, who was in that cast with him? Walter Matthau was one of his early films. Oh my god, I love that man. Yeah, Mimsy. Yeah, <laughs> I just I love that guy with all my heart. No, the soundtrack was the best soundtrack he made as well. And what was the What was the first? Do you remember the first Elvis song that you sang as a kid? God, blimey. Probably something like Teddy Bear or something easy. And was it? Were your, were your parents fans? Is that how no, you? No, no. My dad was a um, massive country fan, Johnny Cash. Oh. And then through lit being brainwashed with country, Don Williams, Johnny Cash. Yeah. You, you realise that Johnny Cash's early stuff is early rockabilly. Yeah. And then you go back to the, where was that recorded? Oh, same studio as Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, Roy Orbison. Oh. Think, wow. So no, therefore, rockabilly is my favourite form of music. Uh, was that all RCA Victor in in Nashville? That stuff. Or Sun Studios. It was back at Sun yeah. in, in Memphis. Yeah, the early Have Sun you been stuff. there? Yeah, yeah, I went there in '97. Oh, yeah. I've, I've been there myself. What, yeah. do, you what do you think oh, of it? Sun Studio. I Goosebumps. Like, I know. Like meeting you. Goosebumps. Oh, on you lovely man. <laughs> hey, I've got goosebumps on goosebumps. Um, and they've got the mark on the floor. That's, that was yeah, my favourite yeah, thing. Little yeah. mark on the floor where apparently Elvis yeah. used to stand. It's the, it's the shrine, isn't it? It's the shrine, exactly. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember now is there actually like a bit of tape? Do they actually put. Yeah, there's a cross on the floor. Yeah. Right? White tape. And did they. Did you say 99 you were there? 97. And have you been since? Or? I'm going to go back probably next year. Oh, you're kidding me. Yeah. Well, I went. I can't remember if this happened after. Uh, you went in 99 or whether they told you the story but I went about three or four four years ago I think and they told the guy that takes you around Sun Studios t told a brilliant story when you end up in the, the recording studio itself which yeah. is kind of at the end of the tour isn't it yeah, yeah. and she was talking about that mark and she pointed it out and she said one day however long ago Elvis Costello walked in didn't do the tour walked in got down on his hands and knees kissed the mark on the floor Did and he? left. Really? Isn't that great? Right. Just Blimey. came in like to yeah, pay yeah. homage yeah, yeah. or homage. Homage, Kissed yeah. the floor and left. Yeah. So when that happened, I don't know. That could have been just a, you know, a, yeah, a they, couple of still, years. They're still recording there. They're still shut You're it kidding down. me? No, they still shut it down at night. U2 have done an album there. Loads, loads of bands. Oh, U2. So. Did, was it Joshua Tree they did there? I don't know. Was it Joshua Tree? Comrades are more of an expert than I want to, yeah. I want to... Uh, the one after the one in the film. Oh, with B.B. King. They recorded with B.B. King. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Angel of Harlem was that. That was... Uh, yeah. Rattling Home! Love. 
Natalie is just coming. Natalie and Hum. She knows it all, doesn't Natalie she? Natalie and Hum. Yes. Yeah, no, she does. She's awesome. She's when awesome. When love comes to town, that's the song. Definitely. And that's the song that they recorded yeah, at Sun Studios so. in. in. Yeah. So you've all now you all got uh, say all the three of you got together through your mutual love and yeah. affection for Elvis Presley first and foremost. Yeah, I met Neil a few years ago. I auditioned for a Neil's former band and uh, didn't get it. Kicked me out the door. You're kidding? No. What was what was, was the, the former band? What I was, was the band? so shit. It was unreal. <laughs> no, you were real. <laughs> what was the name of Neil's former band? Uh, the Slammers, Maximum Jive Band. Okay. And it was Jive was a bit different. I'm a rock and roll and rock. Yeah. And roll, so um, my voice was more, you know, southern slang. And Neil says no. But one day we worked together. I thought, yeah, right. Oh. And what did you uh, what did you audition with, Dave? When you auditioned oh, I can't for? Remember. Agadoo, Do you remember Neil? Agadoo or something? <laughs> 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 okay, have you prepared an audition track? Uh, yes, I have. It's uh, it's by Agadu. Yeah. It's uh, no, it's by Black Lace. Yeah. Uh, Neil, do you remember this uh, fateful audition when Dave walked in that day? Uh, yeah, I did. He was a rubbish swing singer, but we did do a couple of uh, Elvis songs, um, which he was absolutely fantastic. And I think that's what sold me on him. And I said to him, one day we're going to work together. And what what Elvis number did he do in the audition, Neil? Do you it remember was that? Slicing sand. Yeah. Right and. I can't remember the second one. It was about ten years ago. So. <laughs> it was ten years ago. Ten years ago. So you've yeah. been you've been doing this for no. Then Neil emailed me out of the blue. He folded his other band and said, "Are you still up for that um, band that we talked about?" I thought, "What, Neil? Oh, I remember him." Oh my so goodness! So we, we got together. We got in the studio as a we're going to do a Johnny Cash act and Sun Studio stuff. Yeah. And as brilliant as Johnny Cash is, we realised how depressing it was. Uh huh. If you're going to play theatres and that, Johnny Cash isn't going to fill the theatres. So what were you doing at the time then, Dave, when you got the call from, from Neil all of that time I'm after? I was doing my own solo show. I got my own solo show going, so uh, which I still run now. But And what do you, in a, what do, you do in the solo show? Is it, ju- is it just Elvis? Similar to what we do with the band. It, no, it's rock and roll, Elvis, tribute, um, Shaking Stevens, all that sort of stuff. Oh, I love uh, it. I love it. Yeah. Didn't Shaky do a brilliant version of Blue Christmas? Yeah. Every time you yeah, get like I a Christmas it. compilation album, it's, it's always the other one that you had the hit yeah, with. Yeah, no, I prefer Blue Christmas. Blue, yeah. his, honestly, Shaking Stevens, yeah. like you've never tell it. Have you ever met him? No, never I've never met him. I've seen him a million times. Apparently he's him. horrible. Yeah. I, you just hear bad things about Shaking. Exactly, yeah. But the one thing I would tell Shaking Stevens if I ever did meet him is your version of Blue Christmas beats anyone else. Yeah, I agree. It's just the most awesome yeah. version. Yeah. So do you do that in a Christmas set? Do you do Yeah, yeah. We just obviously we just had Christmas and I've chucked that in the set and Um when you when you do Blue Christmas, Dave, do you do Blue Christmas in your style or do you do Elvis doing Blue Christmas? No, the or? version I've got is the Elvis version because my voice is a bit I mean Shake is pitch is so high. Yeah. So. Without, you know, unless I squeeze me nuts all night, I can't. I can't. <laughs> so if you were gonna, if you were gonna audition, I'm getting the hang of this. I'm getting the hang of this now. Can, can I, can I just interject and yes, go back Neil. to Memphis? Yeah. Right, I got married at Graceland. Come off it. No, I did. You yeah. can do that now. Yeah. Uh, Chapel in the Woods. Yeah. Right out the back. Yeah. Um, a Cadillac picked us up from the Peabody Hotel. Yeah. Drove all the way through Memphis, straight out to Elvis's. House, and we had all the photographs taken in front of the You're Graceland. kidding me. When was this? Brilliant. How long ago? Um, eight years. And what? And do they? Do you? Do they close Graceland for that day? Was the wedding takes place? Or no? No, it's still all the people coming in. But as we had our photographs taken, they yeah. stopped all the people from going to the front. The That's house. fantastic. And we had a picture taken on the front. The um, Steps and everything. Like that, that must be awesome for the tourists yeah. as well. You know, they, yeah, well, they were taking pictures of us. You're kidding? No, they just thought we were film stars because I was all quiffed up and white tuxedo and black trousers. And, and was that the first time in your life you've been there, Neil? Or have you? It was the first time I've been there. And when was this again? Sorry, this was about eight, nine years ago. What getting married at Graceland? Check him out. Eh? I just oh, open top Cadillac from people at the hotel. It was wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. The quiff was one side of me. <laughs> <laughs> Like <laughs> I just, I love it. I just, I've been there the, the one time, the same trip. I went to uh, uh, Memphis and, and Nashville. And I take it, obviously, you went, you went to Graceland as well, Dave, did you? Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, the whole it, thing. It's yeah. just, it's the most fantastic place. But I'll tell you what, you want to go upstairs, don't you? Yeah. yeah. When are they going to open that? I they know. Go, they well, will do one day. Well, I don't know. The, when I went, the guide said the reason why we don't let anybody go upstairs is out of respect for Elvis. Because apparently, when Elvis was alive, he was a fantastic host. Graceland was always full of people and he was a great host and entertainer and he loved having people around and you were allowed in every room of the house apart from upstairs. So were you told that? No, I wasn't. That's the thing that the guide said, out of respect for Elvis Presley, you're not allowed upstairs because when he was alive... You weren't allowed to go upstairs. I perhaps because he died up there. That's why you weren't allowed. Well, you know? well, I, you sort of think to yourself, is that may or may not be true? Yeah, yeah. But really, yeah. if he didn't die in the bathroom in those circumstances that we all know about, yeah, yeah, would you be able to go upstairs? You probably would, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would they, so, they yeah. just don't want you know people like me or you know the Japanese. <laughs> 
sitting on the toilet, taking, going, you know, doing selfies. Like, who wants that? You know, what, you know, can you imagine that? People turning up at Greystone doing selfies, sitting on Elvis's bog. It would just be. I love it. You've got to prevent that from happening, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I tell you, this means nothing to most people. But my my dad is a big car booter, loves doing car boot sales, and he collects these Murano claims, like 1970s glassware. Have you ever seen a Murano claim? No. They're horrific. It's like they're glass blown clowns all blown out of shape so they're all weird you, you see them loads of them at car boot sales but like my dad buys them and he loves them and we're all got me and my mum oh, f- these gla- you know these glass clowns are a nightmare so I go to Graceland with my dad we go down into the jungle room which yeah. for me is yeah. the greatest yeah, room, yeah, great room yeah. what's Elvis Presley got dotted around the jungle room Rano claims. I couldn't. Elvis Presley and my dad's going see if it's good enough for the king. Off dad. Yeah, I know. Oh, dad, you told me you've never been to Graceland before. He said how much? <laughs> Four dollars. Me, babe. Oh my God, Dave. So listen. So you've been a fan of Elvis since the age of nine. Yeah. You were twelve when he passed away. Yeah. Uh, now already at that time, that you had, were people telling you that you could sing. Were people saying to you... No, I was... I, my dad said to me, you should be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> no, he did. <laughs> really? I was in this bar in Spain, and they were just asking people to come up and make people laugh or sing. Yeah. So I just went up and did a five-minute stint doing comedy. And the place was in... It was, the place was called The Drunken Duck. Yeah. And pe- people were in uproar. So um, I thought that was the route I was going to go down. I won, I won a contest on a holiday camp. Did you? So I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. Where was the holiday camp? Uh, uh, up in Norfolk somewhere. Where was... When did you win the contest? How old were you? Oh, it was in my twenties. Were you? Yeah. It was in my and 20s. what did what did, what was your act? What did you do? Oh, I did a Ray Charles. I put a black pair of tights on my head and with a pair of glasses. Because yeah, Mama gonna dream me all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and was it all like based with impressions? Yeah, and yeah. Different imp- impressions and one-liners and yeah, situations. But and so, what was the first band that you joined then, Dave? When did you first sort of actually get was, into performing? I've only music? been in one band before this. They were called Rock Around. They yeah. were they were based in Sussex and we just did pubs, clubs, and and at that time, um, oh. I won a Buddy Holly competition on TV a few years ago with Gabby Roslin. Did you? Yeah, and I played Buddy in the West End, did that, and yeah. thought I've made it, uh, but I hadn't. No, <laughs> hang on a minute. Did you? So, right, so th- this leads us nicely on because it's not just Elvis, obviously, that you do. You also no. do a Buddy Holly. Now, I didn't know that you were in a, the, the West End. You were in a West End show. Yeah, and you know, through the TV show, whatever you want. Yeah. Like Gabby Roslin. I remember. There was three of us used to compete for, not three of us all the time. Yeah. Three people used to compete each week for different prizes, and the, I competed to be in Buddy in the West End, and I won it. I remember that show. Yeah. So you, you were up against two other buddies. Yeah. And yeah. you won, you were the best buddy on the night. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And your prize was to perform as Buddy Holly in the West End. At the Strand Theatre. I don't think it's called the Strand anymore. You're but, kidding uh, me. No, that was me. And was it the Buddy Holly story, that show which yeah. I've seen? Yeah, it's been, it was in the West End for 15 years, something, and then it stopped, and then it's come back, and now I think it's touring again now as we speak. Did you go out on the tour? No, I just stayed in London. Okay, because I saw the Buddy Holly story uh, at the Bristol Hippodrome, so I wouldn't have seen you in no, Bristol. No, no, no. That would have been quite weird. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I didn't. When was that show, the TV show that you won? 98. I do remember it. Yeah, a lot of people say that actually. Yeah. yeah. And how many and how how long did you did you perform as Buddy in the West End again? Just a few weeks, that was it. What an opportunity yeah. that yeah, was. Yeah. And t- that must have been like the highlight of oh, your yeah. whole Best time life, life at the time. Yeah, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And what was how many numbers would you do in the show as as Buddy? They used to bring me on as um they used to fit me into the show as um a guy who was um paying tribute to Buddy Holly at, yeah. Clear, at Clear Lake. So I'd come on and do a couple of numbers and then yeah. And then what did you do after that? Did you? And then obviously, I then I thought I was going to go down the theatre route, and I auditioned for uh, Greece. I got did called, you? Called back for the role of Kanicki. I can see it was Kanicki. <laughs> you can see it was Kanicki. I can say Kanick. Kanicki from Kanicki is. I can totally yeah. see it. What did you do for your Greece audition? Um, oh, we were just dancing on stage. All these proper professional dancers uh-huh. in their nutsack tight trousers. Yeah, and, yeah those budgie smugglers. And I thought, what the hell am I doing? I know, I, I know. Just, I walked out, and as I was walking out, the producers pulled, said, no, 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 can you come here? And I went, sorry, I'm, I'm wasting your time, I'm not, I'm not a dancer. And they said, no, no, what's your <laughs> name? <laughs> it took me, took me name down. Uh, yeah. And a week later, I got called back for Ola Kanicki by walking out the theatre. You're kidding, so you got no, a call back on it? I got a call back but on it, But you obviously... Yeah. You didn't, didn't get it. Oh, no. you're kidding me. No. So did you do any more shows after the... Uh... And then I went and did amateur theatre. Yeah. The guys and dolls, Fiddler on the Roof, tons of stuff like that. Oh my, you, who did you play in Fiddler on the Roof? I was a uh, model, the uh, sewer, the um, 
The one that stitched, sewed. This is a very varied uh, life yeah. you've had so far, Dave. <laughs> Bunny Ollie, Elvis, <laughs> Top Hole. You've been, you've been yeah. <laughs> putting a stocking on your head and doing Ray Charles. Yeah. He's like, desperate for work. Bloody <laughs> hell. Thanks, Ian. So, yeah. so, when was, so throughout all of these uh, brilliant, colourful experiences, which I, I could talk to you about all day because yeah. I've just got a passion and a love for all of this, Whilst you were going through all of these different guises, rock and, and, roll was and still there. yeah, it was always rock and roll. And but also in your mind, were you thinking, all I want to do is Elvis? Yeah, I was. I used to go and see Shaking Stevens and all the other rock and roll bands I loved, blah blah blah. And I, 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 that's what I want to do. And then I started my own solo show, joined this other band that was in for three years. Uh, the politics of the band made me leave that. Really? Did me own solo stuff again, and then I met Neil, and now we are where we are with the Buddy Press. So band. tell me briefly, so go back a bit to, to the other band when you started doing it. What was that band? It was just, uh, they were called Rock Around. They're still going now. Yeah. It was all honourable, you know, I honoured all the gigs I had, blah, yeah. blah, blah. They've, got an, they've since got another, I think it'll be for another couple of singers. And yeah. They're still playing now on the rock and roll circuit down south, so. But you, politics, got out of that? Yeah, it was just bitching and arguing. I thought with my solo show, I could sing what I want when I wanted. Um, but there, there's still that nagging thing that I haven't fulfilled being in a proper band, and well, I've got it now with these. But guys. now you've got it. You're in yeah. it. You're, you're doing it. It's like your dream yeah. come true. It is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's time to hear a track. Are you ready to play a, a, a track for us, guys? Yeah. Uh, Dave, what are you going to do for us, mate? Probably the birdie song, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Black Lakes. Is it Blue Moon of Kentucky? Blue Moon. Shall we do Blue Moon? I love yeah. it. Okay. It's one of Britain's premier tribute mm. acts. Is the Buddy Presley Band, my friends, with Blue Moon of Kentucky. Shining bright, blue moon, I keep on shining bright. You're gonna bring me back to my baby tonight. Blue moon, keep shining bright. I said, Blue moon, I can talk you down to keep on shining. Well, shine on one that's gonna let me blue. I said, Blue moon, I can talk you down to keep on shining. Well, shine on one that's gonna let me blue. Well, it was on the one moonlight night, stars shine bright. We spun high and love say goodbye. Blue moon, Kentucky, don't keep on shining. Well, shine on one that's gonna let me blue. Go, baby. Talk you down to keep on shining. Well, shine on one that's gonna let me blue. I said, Blue Moon, I can talk you down to keep on shining. Well, shine on one that's gonna let me blue. Oh, well, it was only one of moonlight night, stars shine bright. We spun high, and love say goodbye. Blue Moon, I can talk you down to keep on shining. Well, shine on. One that's gonna let me blue Well, shine on One that's gonna let me blue Well, shine on The one that's gonna let me blue Come on! Thank you very much. Fantastic! If you've just tuned into Foo Bar this afternoon, that was the Buddy Presley Band with their version of Blue Moon of Kentucky. I love it, Dave. Thank you very much. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you. So let's go back and let's talk specifically then about the genesis of the Buddy Presley Band. Uh, so for those of us who've just tuned in, uh, you formed this band or you joined this band when? Uh, 2011, 12, end of 2011? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, end of 2011, and we rehearsed big time for about a year. We're, no gigs for a year? No, we're, we're an eight-piece band. There's four musicians. You're kidding. Drummer, bass, guitar, keyboard. Myself as front man, and we have a three-piece stroke four-piece band. Uh, but for backing vocal group like the Jordanaires. Wow, oh, I love it. So, well, although we're classed as a tribute act because we're doing Buddy Holly and Elvis, we like to think that we're more authentic than most of the others out there. And plus, that we've got the fact that we've got the male backing vocal group. It's Absolutely, a, it's a big difference to some of the other acts out there. Well, based on certainly based on that track, obviously that's the first song you've played. Which you're going to play another for us uh, uh, shortly, which is fantastic. But you've you've definitely got your own style. You've got your own sound. Yeah, it's not like to me just hearing you for the first time playing. Blue Moon. It's, you're not just imitating 
you know, Elvis, or you've definitely got your own thing going on, which I think is yeah. great. Well, we all feel the music. That's, I mean, a lot of these bands, I'm not knocking any bands out there, but a lot of these shows have session musicians. Yeah, I need to work. I'll come along and do rock and roll. They've got no feel for the music. They're just musicians. Sure. But all of us in the band, we feel feel the music. So So there's three of you here with me today. There's Neil, there's obviously you, David, and there's Corrado as well. Um, but there's eight of you in total. Yeah. And you practiced and played together for a year before you even went out on the road yeah we've yeah. got a rehearsal studio down in leatherhead that we meet we meet once a week and uh basically put this show together and it's ongoing we've got a big tour coming up this year playing theaters all over the uk where so. are you where are you touring where's your first port of call uh, Bath. Bath yeah. You're kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. You're kidding. Whereabouts in Bath? Chapel Arts Centre in Bath. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. We've not I played there before. We've only done well, how many gigs? Eight, nine gigs at the moment. Yeah. We did a yeah. mini summer tour last year, which went down a storm. Yeah. Where did you go in the summer? Well, we had people jiving on stage with us and all sorts. We played um, East Grinstead, Chequamy Theatre. We played in Yorkshire, the Richmond Theatre Royal. Yeah, up there. Lovely. Really Very nice. One, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, all over. So, are you going to uh, chuck some tickets my way then, Dave? Where can oh, we're, yeah, and definitely, mate. Yeah. People well, listening. We're down, down your way a lot. We're doing playing Taunton, Yeovil. Are you really? Yeah, uh, Dorchester, Cornwall. Yeah. Um, 18 dates, I think we've got. So, uh, what about our, our Exeter. Exeter as well? What about yeah. our listeners? Anyone uh, listening now who, who uh, like what you do and want to get tickets and come and see you live? How can they obtain tickets? On our tickets? website is our tour with uh, web- website links for theatres, www.thebuddypresleyband.co.uk. All our info's on there, biogs, videos, audios. Lovely pictures of me. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So tell me about your first gig together. Where was your, your very first? That was up in Norwich in a nightclub. Yeah. How'd it go? Um, yeah, we've, we've had better gigs. Well, you, what, because no. of the, the, was the, the PA system or um, the I revelers? I don't really know. It, it was probably our worst gig. Was it? But I think by being bad... We learned from it. We thought we won't do that again. We won't do this again. And did you feel deflated after that gig? Because you were like, oh my God, we've been no. playing together for a year. We've been practicing. And that's no, our, you know, um, it was a funny feeling, wasn't it? It, it was a promoter's thing. He, he actually never promoted anything. Really? <laughs> he expected us to do it all, which we put it on their website and that's it. But there was no posters, no newspapers yeah, I think we had about 30 people there, you know. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were good. <coughs> they loved people. it. Those were there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was a bit deflating. You go all the way up to Norwich and, you know, it's like, yes, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and then, and then by the end of the summer, we're having three hundred people in a theatre. Brilliant. Some on stage, standing ovations a lot, wasn't it? So, what's what's the dream then? What's the ambition for this band? Where would you like to to take it? I mean, like realistically. Um, realistically, we, we want to play bigger theatres. We're playing sort of two fifty, three hundred seat theatre venues at the moment. But you know, if that can get bigger and better, you know, just take it to stage as it comes. And, and, if and you, uh, record an album, obviously. And which you haven't done yet. We've but done I demo t- tracks. And we've recorded some stuff. Um, that we've got on our website, but not a proper proper album yet. So that would be a, a, an ambition for what, like this year, next year? Probably the way we're, we're very busy this year. Probably the latter end of this year, early next year, if, if this tour goes well, because people are going to be asking for CDs, obviously. And in your in your guys uh, as uh, uh, vocalist, musical uh, impersonator, Dave, are you ever asked to like you know do any of those those shows like Legends, for example, in Blackpool, or like there's one in Vegas? No. You know, have you ever been approached by anyone? Listen, we're really looking for like a really strong Elvis. No, Could you come in, no. help I mean, us out? I've done a few of the old tribute competitions and whatever. Uh huh. Um, reached the final of one at the Blackpool Opera House. Who were you up against? Who else was in the final? I love this. I love the world of the celebrity impersonator. I could talk well, about this was, all night. It was an Elvis tribute competition. So was, they were all Elvises. They were, yeah, there was thirteen of us. Basically, this show called One Night of Elvis toured the country, and at each venue, they wanted people to come up and compete to win shows. Yeah. And I won the heat at the Tunbridge Wells Assembly Hall. Oh, very nice. Down in Kent. Royal Tumbridge Wells. And, sorry, and uh, so all the f- winners of each venue yeah. then met in Blackpool at the Blackpool Opera House in front of 2000. We had a celebrity judgment panel. And oh, beautiful. Who were the judges? Can you remember who the judges were? Uh, Mike Reed. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> you're like one of them. Okay. Darren Day. Oh, brilliant. And Rolf Harris. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what a lineup. Oh, my God. Hey, that Darren Day's a Darren. Roman. <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh, <laughs> that's like, true. I'm not making it up. That is awesome. I love yeah. this. And how many Elvises in the in the final? Thirteen of us. And yeah. was there any? I mean, what is it like? Is it like Miss World? Was it all like bitchy? Like, oh no! We, we honestly, everybody we getting on. Such a laugh. Yeah, it's just a, a riot. I mean, every year they have the European Championships up in Birmingham. I've entered a few times. Uh, there's tribute competitions all over the Elvis tribute scene is so massive I know yeah it's absolutely massive and was there anyone like in that final that you, like you and others would look at and go you've got to be kidding me 
Elvis, really? Uh, oh, yeah. What, really? what, in that sense? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Some yeah. Who, was dire. Go some, on. who was no, that? No, I'm not naming Oh, you don't name names, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, some of them are just awful. I mean, they... I'm not the best by far, but there's some of them are out there just by... Oh. There are some good ones, though. Oh, but some... I suppose it's just like any... There are so many. Yeah. Like Tom Jones impersonators, and there are so many. Yeah, oh, my yeah. God, you know. Yeah. You've got to be so good to stand out. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest two, they're both American, Cody Slaughter and Sean Clush are probably the best two out there at the moment. The Legend Show in Blackpool used to have a good one when I, I saw that show a few times a few years ago. Yeah. And they had, I think his name was Clayton, he, he, he was an American, and he was a really good one. Yeah. Uh, there are some really good ones out there. Yeah, there are. And didn't they make, was it about a year ago they made that documentary, there was a documentary on TV about the Elvis impersonator, like a dwarf? <laughs> there, was like a, there, was like a, there was like a dwarf I'm sure it's like a dwarf black Elvis really? yeah I, did you ever see that show? no I didn't see maybe it was one. just an awesome dream <laughs> I'm sure they made a TV show and it was a dwarf black Elvis I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> have you seen the film I was, I was on the one show another name God, yeah, I was yeah. on the one show yeah. in 07 it was the 30th anniversary of Elvis' death yeah and I got this email saying, hi, Dave, we want you to appear on the one show as an Elvis tribute. I was celebrating, you know, the King's death. But, you know, being a fan. Of course. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. And there'd be you and a few others. So I turned up. There was 30 Elvises. We, oh. had, we had a black woman. We had a kid of about 13. You're kidding me. Honestly, we had pet cats, goldfish. It was just ridiculous. Oh, my God. <laughs> 30 of us crammed in the studio singing Always On My Mind. Oh, my God. So uh, that, was, that was Christine Beakley's first show. On that the, must the be show. awesome. Yeah. Oh, and Adrian Charles, <laughs> gentleman. Yeah. 30 <laughs> Elvises in a room. <laughs> What's not to <laughs> They call them Elvi on mass. 30 Elvi. <laughs> 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 That's the best thing I've ever heard. Honestly, we're Elvi. <laughs> <laughs> We are no. one. <laughs> we are one. <laughs> that is brilliant. 30 Elvi. Oh my God, like some kind of awesome sequined fungus. Yeah. It's like, we're the Elvi. <laughs> it's like a gang. My Heard God. Oh, that is just brilliant. You must be having just the time of your life, though, doing this then. This is, oh, yeah. It's your dream come true. Yeah. Would you do another song for us, boys? Yeah. Okay, what's it going to be? I've got <laughs> Full Such As I. Is that. Wait, full Such As I? Yeah. 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 Okay, if you've uh, just it. tuned in. We are talking to and listening to the Buddy Presley Band, and this is Fool Such As I. Very nice. 
Thank you. It's the Buddy Presley Band on Fubar, if you've just tuned in. With the Elvis Presley classic, Full Such As I. Thank you very much. Lovely job, guys. Really lovely. Um, I've got a couple more questions <laughs> for you, David, because I've got to ask, being a, a big, big fan of the, of the tribute band and the tribute act, uh, in your opinion, who, not necessarily Elvis, could be anybody, who do you think out there right now is like the most awesome tribute act working today? Could be anyone. Have you seen anyone over the years that you think they are particularly like amazing? Um... No, but one of my favourite shows is a show called That'll Be The Day. Yeah. Um, with a guy called, I think it's from your neck of the woods as well, Rebel Dean. I've seen it a few times, yeah. Rebel Dean is probably the best Shaking Stevens. He's more like Shaking Stevens than Shaking Stevens. <laughs> but he's in this show, That'll Be The Day, and it's absolutely yeah, fantastic. It's a good show. It's oh, a great it's, show. You come out on a high every time I see it. And was it ever an ambition of yours to, <clears throat> to do Stars In Her Eyes when that was still on TV? Did you ever audition for that? No, or? everyone said I should, but I never did. No. Who would you have done? Buddy Holly or Elvis? Um, I'd probably done Buddy Holly because everybody does. Because I won with that, you know, that TV yeah. show a while ago. I'd have probably struck while the arm was hot. And but you didn't fancy it? No, I didn't. No. Is there a reason for that, or did no. you not like the show, or did you not watch it, or? Um, I think I just thought it wasn't good enough. I just thought, no, nah, I wouldn't get that. So I think the wrong. trouble as well with, with that show. I've heard so many different stories about that show, and I think they would, like, you would go in, like, say for example, Dave, you went in and you said, look, I'm here to audition for either Elvis or Buddy Holly. They would kind of go, no, 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 Sinatra. And they would kind of yeah, very yeah. often make you do someone that, who, that you didn't do. Yeah, exactly. They would kind of cast. Yeah. They started to cast the show. Yeah. Um, I'd love to go on. If, if they ever brought it back, I'd, I'd go on and do Alison Moyer. I do, I do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> but I've heard, like, I, I've, like, I've, and I said that once. And I, like, great story. <laughs> Uh, Stars and I, it's my favourite. You know Andy Peters, the television yeah, yeah. presenter at yeah. the old broom cupboard, Andy Peters? Yeah. Andy Peters wanted to do Celebrity Stars in Her Eyes one. Did he actually do it? He might have done it. But he told me this story when he wanted to go on. I swear to God, Andy Peters told me this story. Andy Peters wanted to go on Stars in Her Eyes as Justin Timberlake, but the producers <laughs> refused to let him white up. <laughs> 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 That's a completely that true. They yeah. completely wanted to do Timberlake. They wouldn't really? let him white up. They said, "You're not whiting up. You no. can't do that. We'll have complaints." So I just, but I, I do it in a heartbeat. Alison Moyet. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Maybe the cross gender thing. Maybe that's not allowed. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> But great, great singer. If oh, Moyer. brilliant singer. Yeah. If not the same since she's lost all that weight though, Dave. Don't you no, think? No, that's right. Yeah. I'm what not... is that thing like? about when great singers, if they lose weight, something goes from the voice. Yeah. I, I, How is that possible? God knows. Because the, the, does the diaphragm actually mm. does that change size? I think it must do. Probably. Yeah. There's yeah. got to be some. She was unique. Resonance. She was amazing. When she oh, out. yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I mean, we all we all appreciate other genres of music. All, you know, the whole band, all three of us, but our roots are stuck in the fifties. But I can appreciate anyone. Out of the genre that we love, you know, if they're good, they're good. At the end of the day, so. absolutely right. And yeah. is that I know it's a long way off. We've only just got, got over Christmas, but uh, is there a big plan for the summer? Are you planning like another big summer tour or anything like that? Yeah, well, this tour is it goes right through to October. You're kidding me. Yeah, no. So we're playing up as far as Lincoln, Stoke on Trent, Tamworth, Redditch. We, these are all the names on top of my head. How many dates so far? I think it's 18, 17, 18, 18. dates. Yeah. yeah, with with more to follow. Hopefully, yeah. Because I take yeah. it if you if you, if you could, you probably do this every night because you love it. Yeah, we probably will. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you, Neil Carrado, Dave. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank I think you. you're fantastic. We appreciate it. Go on to the website, thebuddypresleyband.co.uk. Uh, thank you so much, the Buddy thank Presley you. Band. Thank you. thank you. Thanks for coming in, guys. Dave, can I get one final? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Come on. <laughs> Here's Hard Sun Eddie Vedder. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>